third coffee of the day. It's only one o'clock. Cheers! Welcome back to my channel. You guys, I'm sorry. I always have the intention of uploading on Monday and I just couldn't pull it together this week. Look at me, I haven't even changed out of my pajamas uh, today. I'm not a stitch of makeup. I think I did brush my hair today though, which is um, quite an achievement. Mom life, am I right? Also, I'm suddenly so insecure about just straight up vlogging. I feel like, pardon me if I'm incorrect, you saw the title, but I feel like you only love me when I'm dying, which is a great book title. Is that a book title? If not, it's my next book title, don't steal it from me. Uh but I do feel insecure because I noticed that my views, and rightfully so, were like so high when um, I was talking about my heart failure and um, just like the craziness of being in the hospital and all of that. And since then it's declined, which like, again, rightfully so, these vlogs are so specific and like, just me vomiting thoughts and showing my very mundane mom life. So like, I get it. I am not making high quality content here. Never claim to. Um, so again, I'm not like, why isn't anybody watching my channel? I am a genius. Um, I'm very aware of what this is. And I love the people that are here because I feel like you get it. And I'm just keeping you company as you. You told me in the comments last week, some of you were working, one of you was pooping, one of you was in bed, one of you was cooking. Um, somebody was in their car waiting for their daughter at Target, I think. Um, so I'm just there to like be your pal while you do stuff and I love that. I personally like watching those kind of YouTube videos. I think I was telling you guys about Joanna Spicer. Like she does a lot of this stuff, which is just like day to day, nothing extraordinary, um, just sort of living out a real life. I kind of am like your Sims character, except you don't have control of me. Well, you kind of do, you see. You do if I want more of you to watch, because that means I have to do the things that people want to see, like near-death experience, like having a baby. Currently making some formula right now. Um, anyhow, so I was feeling a little bit insecure because I was like, I don't know, my weeks aren't that exciting, um, but I don't wanna not be here with you. So thank you for being here with me, if you are here with me today, just to hang out. Coming up soon, by the way, before this month over is over, I'm going to be doing the story of Annie's birth. I've been putting it off um, because it requires me like sitting down to do it, and I haven't had a moment with Annie, but Annie is doing better and going down faster and taking Decent naps. I'm afraid to say that because she's napping right now and I'm looking at the monitor and I feel like because I said that she's going to wake up right now. Hold on. We're good. Um, so I wanted to like take the time to do that um, video and do it properly. Um, I went on a walk today with a girlfriend of mine who I hadn't seen since having Annie and since the whole heart thing and um, she, I was, we were catching up and she like wanted to hear the story and so I started telling her the story and then I started crying and I was like oh I have not worked through this I have not worked through this um which is totally fine it's going to take me a long time to process it but my therapist was like you need to talk this through like you need to tell this story and I feel like um part of my journey of recovery from um all this trauma is telling the story and so I will be telling the story to you guys because you guys are my ultimate um, audience to tell stories to and I obviously have been sharing everything with you guys and I feel like that's a missing link um, in my storyline that I have yet to share with you guys so I am going to try to do that this week Jeff got me some extra help during the week because he went back to work bless him so I have um, a little extra help during the week so I can actually um, sit down and film that properly. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I'm not dying. I just look like I'm dying. Love me anyways. I'm gonna be making formula. We have switched officially to this formula. This is the Pure Amino. It is so stinking expensive. This thing is like 45 bucks for the small can. It's ridiculous. I did apply uh, to see if my insurance can cover it because technically it's because she has such um, an extreme allergy to dairy or cow's milk um, that she has to use this. So we are submitting that paperwork now and I like fingers crossed because this goes so fast. Um, I feel like we go through a can of this like every three days. 
So yeah, that is going to break the bank, but she is doing so much better since we switched her to this. If you've been following like the colic journey, it's been a journey to say the least. She is now like smiling so much more. She's like so much more fun now because she's not as in, she's not in as much pain as she was before. Um, she's still like now dealing with some constipation, which is not fun, um, as we probably all know, especially those of you who are currently pooping while you watch this. Um, but uh, we are trying a few different things for that. So never ending journey. And what I keep hearing from parents, it's like once you figure out one thing with your kid, they're gonna flip and start something else that you need to figure out. Or once you think you've got like their sleeping pattern down to a science, like the next day they wake up and everything is different and you gotta refigure it out. It's like an ongoing puzzle that I feel like Jeff and I are just like Jenga piecing and it's usually just falling. <sighs> Trying new coffee right now. I'm back to the Nespresso pods, which isn't my favorite. I feel like I do reuse the recycling bag and I ship it back, but I do still feel like it's super wasteful, but it's so much faster for me in the morning. Like this morning, I fed Annie at like 5.30 a.m. And the thought of like using my percolator and then having to clean it later is like such a nightmare. Um, so I went and got some new Nespresso pods and there's a gingerbread one coming out for the season. Um, and it's really, really good. So it's getting me excited about the holiday season, even though it's like 90 degrees here in L.A. Ugh. All right, you're gonna make this formula. I have to concentrate. It requires counting, which, you know, you think is easy, but not when you have been up since 5 a.m. More like 4 a.m. than 5 a.m. You know, you get my point. You gotta count. Be right back. This new update. Um, we've actually really been liking it. We set it on like um, the lowest setting, like the baseline setting, so it doesn't like move that much. Um, it's set like if you don't like lock it into a setting, it'll move more when she's crying. Um, but it goes so intense in my opinion. I know it was like made by a doctor, it is safe, but it just seems like it was moving her around, like jostling her around too much that we just leave it on the baseline. And it's been working really well, but the swaddle that goes with it, for some reason is harder to put on than most swaddles that we have. And she's constantly like busting out of it. This kid is like so strong. I don't know where she got it from. Actually, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, but she's like always busting out of it and it wakes her up. So um, I constantly have to re-swaddle her. Jeff is the best at like doing it super tight. So she was just up because her arm had busted out. So now I'm going to obsessively watch and make sure she stays down. Also, I got these cute bibs. It's this one and the leopard one. And they're really thick. They're more like um, a towel. And at first I was like, I don't really need these right now, but now she's in this like super drooling phase. Jeff said it's like this age, they start to drool more. Also, I think it's the formula. And so I've been using these and they're really cute from Cotton On, which is where we also got um, her baseball cap from. And all my friends like love Cotton On for their kids clothing. I'm sure it's fast fashion and it's terrible. Um, I have to look into that. However, I do know that their stuff is so stinking cute. They make this stuff so cute and so cheap that it's very tempting. But I am back on the um, rental train. I'm gonna pick back up doing rentals. Even though I don't go out that much, I feel like when I do, I'm really struggling to figure out what fits and what to wear. And I don't really want to invest in new clothes because I'm in between sizes and my body's like completely different. And I don't really have time to like go into a store and really figure out like what works on me. So I think rentals at this point is a good thing. I did go back through like the pile of clothes um, that I had kept from pre-pregnancy. It's a mess, but I'm pulling through like things that I think I want to keep and then stuff that I don't want to keep. I am just making a bag to give away. But I feel like half the stuff that I really like is not going to fit me right now. So uh, renting is definitely where it's at. I am lame um, in case you didn't know. And I'm like, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna like rent my clothes for this next month. You get I think God it's been a while. Watch my videos and let me know when I did the newly try-ons, but I think you get six items. That sounds right, right? Six, but you can get up to eight items for like an additional cost. Is that right? Anyways, I'm like, well, what should I rent? What's in style? So I this is where the lame comes in. I'm Googling 
what do moms, what should moms wear in the fall 2023? That's where I'm at in life. So I came upon this website, 100 Affections, homemaking made easy. I know nothing about this, but she is talking about creating trendy mom outfits for fall. Here are the key pieces you need. First, she wants us to be sure that we know that the 90s and the 2000s are back, which is horrifying to me. We've known this for a while. I feel like that, like the 90s trend has been back for quite some time. Um, we're talking flares, bell bottoms, boot cut jeans. I'm a big fan of the bell bottom and the flare. I don't love a boot cut jean on me. I'm too short and I feel like it does me a disservice, but um, also low, low rise jeans are returning, which we hate. Um, I mean, you might love them. Me, post C-section especially, it does not, um, no thank you. Um, wide leg pants and jeans, lots of cargo jeans and pants, which I have so many feelings about. And by so many feelings, I mean one feeling, and that's no, I don't understand. I like, I always thought cargo jeans were lame to begin with, cargo pants in general, and I just like, I can't get behind them. I've seen some people rocking them and they look so cute in them. I just like have such a stigma against them that I can't, I can't and won't go there. Um, leather jacket, leather pants, pop of leather, fur, vest, headband, uh, white button down jeans. I, I mean, this is all like kind of the same stuff we know. Oh, and a big color trend this season, as we know, is red, which I've been talking about. Um, so here are the items that she's suggesting that I should have in my closet for this fall. A long cardigan, basic, a cute pair of fashion sneakers, which honestly I, I agree with. And the ones that they're showing right now, here I'll show you, are these camel pair and actually like love those. What are those? Let's see. They're Echo shoes, which I actually really like Echo. I discovered Echo a long time ago when I took a trip to Europe and I was like, I need comfortable shoes. And um, the Echoes were where it was at for me. Um, comfort, comfort before fashion these days, guys. I feel like Homer Simpson right now. Okay, um, a shacket, shirt jacket. This feels so dated, but I guess it is dated. It's 90s and 2000s, which feels like to me wasn't that long ago, but it was so long ago. Oh, getting older is weird. Sweater dresses, again, feel so dated and I can't get behind them, sorry. Um, it's also hard when you're short to wear a sweater dress. Uh, oversized sweater. I do like the idea of an oversized sweater, but again, when you're petite, it's, um, it's like you have to find the exact right portion proportion, a blazer. I love a blazer on everyone, but me, I just, I've never found a blazer that like fits my style and fits my bod. I think maybe I'm just not meant to be in a mom style here. Vests. I can get down with a vest, I guess. Um, elevated loungewear. Now we're talking. <laughs> no, Lisa, no. I don't need to wear loungewear all the time. But I want to. But I want to. I think I just need to, like, do an elevated loungewear, actually. Because, like, this isn't working for me. <laughs> I mean, it's working for me. But, like, I can't go out like this. Oh, this is cute. She suggested this one from <gasps> Amazon. Hold on. Let me show you this. This looks cute. This is cute. I like it in this color and everything. Ooh, guys, and a 20% off coupon. I might try this and report back to you on that. Okay, long jackets and trench, trench coats. I knew those were in style. Again, hard when you're short, um, but maybe I can rent a petite one. Crossbody bags and sling backpacks. Guys, all about that crossbody bag. Never stopped with that. Um, and that's what she's suggesting, so. This mom is about to be real stylish. Literally out of all those things, I'm like, okay, let's get the comfortable shoes and the comfortable sweats. <laughs> cool. Follow me for more fashion advice. Okay, so I have probably like a half hour and I'm feeling like paralyzed, like I don't know what to do with myself. Um, I have a long list of things that I should be doing and I don't want to do any of it. So instead I wanted to turn on the camera and start talking about The Bachelor in Paradise. I am not watching Golden Bachelor. Unfortunately, like the minute I sit down at night to watch TV, I pass out and this is not a joke. I will ask Jeff, Jeff, if you're watching this at some point to record it because I actually think it's phenomenal. <laughs> I think I'm extraordinary in how fast I can fall asleep once I literally hit the couch. Um, 
if Jeff was home right now and I knew someone was able to like make sure Annie was okay, I'd be definitely passed out. Um, so anyways, I can't watch everything that I normally would watch before because I literally, it takes me like three times to get through one TV show. Last night I had to revisit the challenge because I passed out um, from watching it the first time around and Jeff is so sweet. He like will rewatch the endings of everything with me because I can't do it in one sitting. Anyways, I'm not watching The Golden Bachelor because I just, I can't. And I know that people are really enjoying it, although I have heard mixed reviews. My mom is like, I refuse to watch it. She's like, um, she thinks that it's not fair because they're not representing all um, body types on the show. And she's like, people don't like, most people that age don't look like that. And you know what? I was like, mom, I get it. And also that's what it feels like when you watch The Regular Bachelor too. Like, Literally all the women are like stick thin on that show. It's really like kind of messed up now that I think about it. Anyways, so um, I'm watching Bachelor in Paradise though because that is like my comfort and I love Paradise. Um, and it's pretty, pretty good this season. Uh, I just got caught up and I'm just gonna give a quick recap. I don't know anyone's names, so I'm the the worst for even attempting to do this, but this past week, a cat, cat, yeah, cat, not the cat with the wide eyes, but like the other cat chick has been so, did you hear that? Okay. Annie's been like screaming randomly in her sleep. It's horrifying, like a horror movie. Jeff and I, the other night, Jeff was coming in from a walk with Horny and I was in bed and she still sleeps in the bassinet next to me. And it happened and it like my heart like dropped. It sounded like an adult woman screaming at the top of her lungs. And so much so that Jeff heard it when he came in right as he walked in, he like ran into the room and we just looked at each other and she was like completely asleep. And like we grabbed hands cause it was like, it was, it was a horror movie. Um, and she just did that now. She's been doing that and it's um, like, she's totally asleep, but screaming just in time for Halloween. Anyways, going back to Kat, I, uh, I feel like she is, I, she's beyond a mean girl. She's like gaslighting everyone, including maybe herself. So basically she was like with this guy, Brayden, who I didn't like from last season, but this season I, I, I think I like him a little bit better. Mixed reviews. He's the guy that wears the earrings. Um, he seems like he handled this situation really well, but like they hit it off like right away and they were like so like hot and like heavy with each other. <laughs> I sound like such an old lady. They were like getting it on real well together. And then um, like this other dude comes down and he's like very attractive and I can't remember his name at this exact moment. Tanner. Tanner comes down and all the girls are like, oh my God, Tanner, Tanner's so hot. I don't remember Tanner, but Tanner is very, very attractive. And she, Tanner like pulls her aside and asks her to go on a date. And like, mind you, her and Brayden were like, they weren't just like hitting it off. Like they were making out all day, every day, like in the pool and stuff. So like they were clearly like coupling up and they were talking about how much they like each other. And again, they're not there for that long. They don't owe anything to each other. But just like common decency, Tanner's like, will you go on a date with me? And she's like, yeah. And she doesn't tell Brayden. Like, she doesn't like say like, hey, I'm going to go on this date. Like, you know, this is what Paradise is for. Like, thank you for understanding. I just want to like, you know, I got to, I feel like I have to like check out all my options. Like, which is like what the right thing to do in that scenario is. Again, this is like such an extraordinary situation because you're on reality TV. And you're supposed to be dating all these people. But um, can you tell how passionate I am about this and also how much coffee I've had? Um, so anyways, she is like, yeah, I'll go on the date. And she like goes and gets ready for the date. She doesn't say anything to him. She like steps over him to get ready to go on the date. And then she comes out and she's like looking all cute and everything. She's a super pretty girl. And she comes out and Brayden's like, you look so nice. And she doesn't even say anything to him. And then she goes on this date and she comes back and basically is like, finally like pulls Brayden aside to have a conversation with him about it. And it's like, she's getting so angry at him but he's like remaining very calm cool and collected and i think like she ultimately like just wanted to like 
date Tanner and was just either using Brayden for a while or like or to get the rose or like she liked Brayden but like Brayden was more of like a vacation kind of boyfriend and she's really looking for something different anyways whatever the case is she was like instead of just being mature and being like hey like I actually think I like Tanner better I'm so sorry she like May was like gaslighting him like making him feel bad like he did something wrong it was a very bizarre situation and then like some of the girls like pulled her aside and was like just so you know like you really hurt his feelings and she like was getting mad at them for calling her out on it and like she was just like insistent that she handled this properly even though she really didn't anyways i'm rambling but like i feel very passionate <laughs> about this because I feel like she's like completely delusional as to like how she handled this and maybe it was all in the editing but I'm not loving it and I need that storyline to end and I kind of just want her to go home because I feel like she's not very nice that being said the best part of paradise and I think this is a controversial statement I feel like most people did not will not agree with me and in fact will like strongly disagree with me but one of the chicks whose name I don't remember is severely constipated. She hasn't pooped in 10 days and they made a whole storyline about it where like a doctor comes down and it's like, hey, listen, if like if you don't go by tomorrow, like you have to like go to the hospital and you need to like um, get this like fixed, which like is that true oversharing? But I once went on a long travel and I didn't go for 10 days and like I was uncomfortable, but like when I got home, I was fine. Anyways, um, maybe they just didn't want to be responsible in case like her insides explode. Anyhow, then she's like dating this one guy and she and she has to tell him because she has to leave the next day if she doesn't go to the bathroom and she's been using laxatives and all this. Um, and it was and he was so cute and he like made her a whole, a whole dinner with things that are supposed to make you poop like beans and olive oil and spicy things and like they made a whole storyline out of it and. I like loved every second of it and it ended on a cliffhanger um, where it's like will she poop by tomorrow or will she have to leave and like I feel like most people watching that show are mortified by this but I personally have never <laughs> loved a storyline on The Bachelor more than this and I can't wait to see what happens. I'm on the edge of my seat, my toilet seat. Hey <laughs> Okay, Jeff doesn't want to be on camera because he just said he's fat, old, and cranky, all of which are not true. Well, maybe the cranky part, but um, Jeff also just threw a pumpkin at me, guys. Um, he said, heads up, and I turned around, and I like saw that something was being thrown at me, and I put my hands out, and it wasn't until I caught this that I processed that it was a pumpkin. I'm very impressed with myself and also horrified that that just happened, but Jeff, um, True or false, the internet only loves me when I'm dying. Uh, they love you more. That, you know what, that's a really, Jeff, that was a really PC way to answer this. Have you told him about your Lou Gehrig's diagnosis? No. <laughs> what other truths does the internet uh, bring besides the fact that they really only love me when I'm dying? Do you have any other, like, I feel like the internet is full of those moments. What, that people only love you if you're dying? Yeah, or like what other like terrible <laughs> truths does the internet Whatever you remember? thought was wrong, whatever you did was incorrect, uh, everyone has already tried everything we're about to try and we shouldn't, and um, yeah, you know, climate change is real. Like, <laughs> you know, the internet's a weird place, but I'm happy to be here in our own little corner, you know? Not dying, thank God. Jeff would also like to mention that I'm really bad at making grocery lists and every time he comes home from the grocery store he is angry because I forget 12 things on the list that he has to then email or email me, <laughs> text me about. Oh, you're ready. I'm yeah. being misrepresented in this vlog. I was called cranky. I can self-identify as cranky. Identify. You can't. Okay, okay. I've been called angry. I threw a pumpkin. You did? I don't know if I threw it as much as I said a heads up and lovingly, jovially tossed it. <laughs> and I don't come home angry about grocery lists. Fat, old, and cranky. You said it. I posted these on Instagram, but I think it's worth mentioning here on YouTube that these are the absolute best passies. Um, Lenny just like will only take these. She likes the round size one. Uh, from Bibs. They have like a few different 
sizes and a few different shapes, but the round size ones seem to work the best for her, and they're so cute. And um, we just got a few more because they always go missing, but uh, I just wanted to mention if you're on the Passy Hunt, these are absolutely fantastic. They also sent me these um, along with them, and they're so cute, and they actually stay on her, which is quite a feat for little baby feet. Um, they usually, like, socks and stuff fall off so easily, but these have been staying on, and they're just so cute. Okay, it's 5.30, and I might be able at this point to get out of my pajamas to put on my night pajamas. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jeff? I, old, fat, cranky <laughs> jeans I was telling them that we're going to do Family Feud, and I feel like, Jeff, it, the time has come. What do you mean, do Family Feud? You mean, well, like, go to Atlanta and talk to Steve Harvey, or do you mean play the TV game? Play the TV game, or for you to ask me questions, and I'm going to do the speed round. What's it called? But I haven't surveyed 100 people. Yeah, but Jeff, honestly... I feel like there are a hundred different people in your brain at any given time. You know what I mean? Well said. Go. All right. We asked a hundred Jeffs. Uh, name a thing about men that you wish you had. Penis. I mean, it would be now great to have make one. Steve Harvey face. Like, baited you into it. There it is. That's your Steve Harvey face? Yeah. Do it the again so you can screenshot it for the thumbnail. There you go. Um, name a holiday that you would wipe off the calendar if you could. Valentine's Day. Name a food that you only crave when you're drunk. French fries. Nope, that's a lie. But French fries are good. Name uh, a body part that you would swap out with your best friend. Boobs. <laughs> you better put that in. No. You better put that in. No. Put it in. The last question I can't include because Jeff, it was so. <laughs> it was too it's inappropriate. It was too in inappropriate. <laughs> All right, Jeff, I'm going to do it to you now. Horny, you haven't been in this vlog yet. Look at that beautiful body. All right, we surveyed 100 people on the street. Hi, old, fat, cranky family. You look, you look so cute. Doing fast money. You look like a Backstreet Boy or something. I look like I've lost all meaning. <laughs> I need to cut this. I actually like cut this mop mullet. on your head. Oof. All right. All right, we asked 100 people on the street. Mm-hmm. Name something your wife wishes you had different. Uh, bank account. Name something your mom wishes you had different. Uh, years 18 to now. Name something your baby wishes you had different. Uh, general attitude. And name something you wish you had different. Family. She's oh. crying, she's crying. <laughs> All right, and with that, we better get going. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys are still here, you love me because I'm alive, and thank you so much for that. I am um, very appreciative of that. And just an update, I will be going to get um, my heart checked out in, oh, she's like really crying. My heart checked out in a month, so I'll keep you updated on that. I love you guys so very much, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.